Hi, my name is Julia Silke and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. And today in this screencast, we're going to use this week's um, data set from Tidy Tuesday on NCAA um, women's basketball to um, train a model to understand expected wins from the seed in the tournament. Um, what we're going to focus on is how to tune um, uh, hyperparameters and then how to choose the best value for the, um, the hyperparameter that you tuned. And in a slightly more um, complex way with like when, when you care about something more than just the, the best value. So let's get started. Okay, let's get started. So this week's um, Tidy Tuesday data set is about um, college women's basketball. And um, there is quite a bit of inf interesting information in this data set here. Uh, it goes back before um, the number of teams was expanded here. So we've got um, various NAs in here, I think. Um, and there's a lot of different things we could do. Um, when I started looking at this data set a little bit, there was one thing that really uh, stood out to me as pretty interesting um, and a little confusing at first, to be honest. Um, and thank you to my um, co-worker, Tom Mocked, co-worker and organizer of the um, Tidy Tuesday project, uh, because I was really interested in this relation, this idea of the expected wins. Um, so the as people go, as teams, these women's basketball teams go into the um, tournament, they had, you know, they're assigned a seed um, based on um, uh, you, you know, what they, how they did going into, um, the tournament and maybe some other complicated things. I don't know. And then, um, they win a certain number of, um, games in the tournament. And there is, um, uh, uh, so, uh, and, and, you know, depending on the seeds you get, you, um, uh, we expect, so, so you know, depending on the seeds you get, you get certain. You expect some number of wins based on that. And um, uh, five thirty-eight. Uh, if we go, if you go here and you look at this article, there's a table where they um, have done some modeling. They're not clear on what the modeling exactly, the details of the modeling uh, to how they model the number of expected wins. A tournament wins by seed, uh, but I was I was pretty interested in that and wanted to see what can we do to understand um, that kind of um, relationship and how to uh, dig in that a little bit more. So they they have an average column and then they have these other um, uh, columns uh, plus and minus based on. Um, how the with like the strength of the schedule of the teams and that requires information that's not in this data set so we're not going to extend it out we're just going to basically be looking at one curve um, but it's still pretty interesting so let's um, let's get started here so the um, the basic idea here is that by seed the um, let's call it expected wins like this uh, we let's just take like a, a a mean here to start with. The number of wins in the tournament goes down. So um, the, uh, the the mean wins for people who have one seed is high, and then it goes down. So let's make a little bit of a plot here. Seed expected wins like so so uh, you know there's that nice curve um, and so the um, if you look at this table you can see it's very smooth so they've done some kind they've taken the data and they have um, they've not just taken a mean they have um, fit some kind of model um, and uh, created a smooth, a smooth prediction of the number of expected wins uh, for every um, seed 
and and it's not it's not just the mean because their number here is like 3.3 or something like that let's so so this is taking the mean but um you know we we have more data here than just the mean so let's let's look at this a little more detail so let's put um seed on the x-axis the tournament wins on the y-axis and let's um uh let's start let's start with points uh points here and there's um uh let's start here so this this is not this is not a great plot right and but what we can see here is it is a whole bunch of integers right because you can either win or not win a game and the seeds are integers as well so we're dealing with um integer data which um you know is a little uh yeah a little tougher plotting and numbers. I think the best thing to do here is going to be to bin this. Let's um, do bins and um, I think do something like this. Okay and we can you can set the bin width on bins like this bin width bin width. I think I'm doing this right and these are integers like this so we can just set the bin width like so ah okay and this is much better uh, is this right bin width c11 right because there's more um, <clears throat> there's only six going up and 16 going that way and you can also change the colors if you like like scale fill and this is a gradient so we have to use the gradient option so you can say the low um, 80 I don't know 85 and then the high and um, I don't know that's the color I like that's in um, in R okay so here we can see now so the, now this is like a heat map of where where do teams fall during all you know all this data that we have so we have so this is a C so there's lots of people down here and then we see um, we see uh, this, you know, this curve up here. So we've got this curve shape that we saw when we did the mean, but now we're actually plotting all of the data that we have. So how are we going to, um, how, how might we model this? So there's, so this is integer data, wins always have to be greater than zero. You know, there's a lot of sort of, um, uh, complex ways we could try to approach this. We're gonna take an approach here that isn't, perfect but um, uh, we're gonna be it is very applicable to a lot of different cases and so I'm going to show how to do it with the caveat that um, you know it's not it's not perfect but it is interesting and helpful and that is splines so we can visualize them so we don't want the this uh, method and so we say method equals um, LM and let's make the color black here and we can uh, put in a formula. So we'll say y um, tilde, and then we're gonna use the formula for a spline here. So it's ns, and then we say x, and then the degree of freedom. So let's start with a, um, well, let's start with a one, with a one, um, uh, a spline of degree one. Oh, I have to lo load splines. There we go. So that's just a straight line. And then what splines, splines are, you know, these curvy things. So, um, and, and we are fitting the data to this curvy thing here. Notice it, this, you know, this one isn't perfect because it starts to go up again and we know it should just always be decreasing. Um, whoops. This one isn't perfect because it goes below zero, right? And we know it always has to be positive. But in general, this is doing pretty good. Like this is fitting our data pretty well. And that's what splines are like. They're like pretty good in a lot of circumstances. And we could, um, and notice as I go up, it's gonna get curvier and curvier. And that's what splines are. They're like wiggly things. And the natural splines have better, um, okay, so at 15, it's like, you, the, I can't, you don't have enough data to fit a 15 dimensional thing. And look how wiggly it is now. And obviously that is pretty silly, right? Um, uh, okay, so this is the idea of um, the spline. So we're gonna build a model 
um, with splines. Um, we're gonna the fe we're gonna build new features with splines and then fit a linear model with that. And um, uh, we're gonna use some um, tuning to figure out what is the best value here for this um, degree of freedom that we have. And like I said, splines aren't perfect for this, but in many cases, splines get you really far. It can be a good option. So let's start and start our um, start our modeling. So let's take that um, tournament data set. Uh, the reason it keeps saying um, removing these rows is because there are some NA values for seed. There are some things in there that weren't seeded. I'm not even sure what that means, but okay. Initial split. So, and then let's say strata, e strata equals seed so that we split up um, our, our um, testing and training data evenly by seed. And then we will make some Let's make tourney train and let's make that to the training data. And then let's do the same thing for test. Let's run all that. All right, and so let's look. So tourney train is a data set and then turn each test is a data set. And so we won't touch the testing set till the end. It's not very big, but it will be able to give us a more unbiased estimate, a check to see if we did overfitting when it came to our, um, the number of splines that we're gonna choose here. All right, so while we're at it, splitting data, oh, you know what, I gotta, gotta add that seed. Um, so, this, so this is reproducible. So while we're at it, creating data sets, let's set a seed and let's, um, let's make some folds because we're gonna use um, resampling to do the tuning. So um, th let's use bootstrap sampling here, Oops, bootstrap sampling here. So we send it the training data. When we do tuning, we use the, um, we use the training data, not the whole data. And so now this is a whole bunch of uh, uh, simulated little training sets or little data sets to do fitting onto for tuning. So uh, we've got 25 bootstrap resamples. So if um, for each one of these, this will be the um, the uh, the assessment set there. So we will train, we'll train, and that's or and assess, train and assess, train and assess, like like training and testing. Okay. So that's so this is so this is training and testing. This is the resampled data set, which remember is on training, so that we can um, uh, figure out what the right value is for things. So let's set up our data pre-processing recipe, our feature engineering. We start out by saying a recipe. So I'm going to predict the wins from the seed. So pretty simple here, nothing, nothing like a, just, just two variables. And then the data that um, we are gonna use to define our variables is tourney train here. And then this is only gonna have one step and it is this um, spline step. And the, the variable that is going, we're gonna make new spline terms from is seed. And then we have to say, uh, what degree of freedom do we want? So I could say something like four or three, but instead I'm going to say tune. And I am going to, um, because I don't know what the right value is. I wanna figure it out from the data. What's the best value? And um, one thing that I don't think I've shown how to do yet here is that you can um, give your tuned value, your tuned, um, variables, names. Let's call this seed splines here. And we can use that to uh, refer to it later, which sometimes can be convenient. So if you um, like doing that, it can be it can be pretty nice. And I think it's in this, it, it's kind of nice in this variable. So this recipe right now we have defined, but nothing has been estimated or calculated. And in this case, actually, it would be hard to because we don't know what um, what value to put here. And that, in fact, is exactly why in recipes, the 
de definition and then the execution of these recipe um, of these of these data pre-processing feature engineering steps are separated so that we can do things like tuning so fluently. So now we need a model to train and we are just going to use uh, ordinary least squares. So we'll do a linear regression model and we're gonna set the engine to LM. And now we're gonna put this all together in a workflow for convenience. So workflow, we're gonna add the recipe, which is this thing. And then we are going to add the model, which is this thing. And let's call this tourney workflow, like this. All right. All right, so let's add this. So now our workflow is ready to go. It has a preprocessor, it has a model, and it is ready. So let's get, let's do it. So I'm going to use, um, um, I'm going to set up parallel processing because these tuning, when you do tuning like this, it, um, you know, it, it just does, uh, you know, 25 things and it's definitely a good idea to use um, parallel processing when you have access to that. And let's save a couple of things to get ready. Save cred equals true. So we are going to... Um, I'm just saving a control here and, and I need to define a grid. There's a couple of different ways to do this. You know, we, we, I think I've shown how to do things like regular or grid regular. I've shown how to do things like grid, um, you know, Latin hypercube or max entropy, which are these space filling parameter grids. This, this is pretty, um, this is not as complicated as that. So you can actually, you don't have to use those functions. You can, ju you can just create, these are convenience functions for setting up these tables. And if you know what you wanna do, you can, you can just do it yourself. So let's say I wanna try one, two, three, you know, I guess I could do it like this. And then let's say like five, seven, 10 and 15. And remember, I know 15 is not gonna work because, um, uh, I, you know, when we plotted it, it said, uh, you know, it was like a bad, a bad fit. Okay, and now let's set up, and l let me show you just what that looks like. So this is just a tibble, but if I use, when you use grid regular or these space filling grids, they're just making tibbles and they, you know, they just make it easier to set them up when you have um, complex sets of tuning parameters. So let us, so we will take our, um, so let's take tune grid and let's say what we need to put in here. So the first thing is the workflow. Then the second thing is the resamples, which is these, the sets of folds that we had, their, res, their bootstrap resamples. The next thing is the grid, which is this spline grid we made, I made. And then I am going to use that um, uh, control that I made. All right, so let's call this spline result like this. And let us get that started. So what's happening is that for each of these uh, seven options for splines, um, it is, we're fitting, each of those seven options 25 times because there are 25 bootstrap resamples. So we're gonna fit all of them and then we're gonna use the results of that, those, when we go here to evaluate the model. Okay, so so the I, we expected to get these because notice how it's recipe seven out of seven. That's this that's this last one, the 15. And, and I put it in there to kind of show this on purpose that, um, um, it, it's not a good fit. So we know that by the time we get to 15 degrees of freedom in the spline, it is not a good idea. We, we would not want to do that because it's too many degrees of freedom for the amount of data that we have. Okay, so let's look at these results that we have. So spline, ooh, can't spell today. Okay, so we had 15 options that we tried. 
no, I'm sorry, seven options that we tried. And for each of them, we have the RMSC and the R squared. And it looks like, um, it looks like it gets better and better, you know, as you add more and more, um, which makes sense, right? Like the more wiggles and wiggles you add, um, the better you're able to fit it. And we can see that um, if we plot this. So we can, there's an auto plot method for these results, which is pretty good. And so let's, um, let me zoom in here so you can see this. So notice that um, RMSE drops a lot from one to two to three, and then it starts dropping not very much. So it continues to get better and better, but not by a lot. And R squared gets better, 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 and then, you know, not so much up here, there. So um, as we add more and more degrees of freedom, it gets better and better, but not so much after these first ones. So we can look at this plot with our eyes as a human being and make some human judgment about where we might want to um, chop this off. You know, I might choose three, I don't know, maybe four, but prob probably three here looks good to me. But we also have um, ways to choose this uh, using uh, using uh, numeric methods. So um, oftentimes we'll say, we'll say select best. And that says, give me the best. And we'll say spline from the spline result. I want the best, um, uh, I want the best one of these options by um, RMSE. And that, and it says, um, well, that one is all the way down here. You know, like that one, this one has the, um, the, the lowest RMSE, but that's a pretty curvy thing. And I, you know, I could tell, I, I know because of how splines work that, that, um, you, you know, we just keep wiggling and wiggling more and it's going to get pretty great. We have other options here. So we can, so if we look at select, select best, we have these other options. We can select by percent loss, um, uh, which is the simplest model um, within with who's has this percent loss within some limit that we give it, or um, select by one standard error, um, the simplest model within one standard error of the best of the best one. So let's look at those. So let's look at ser um, select by percent loss. And what we do is we say, I want the limit, and let's say 5%, that's how we specify that. And then we have to say the thing that we are um, uh, uh, ordering by. And notice here it says, oh, if you want 5% um, loss in RMSE, you actually, if you, if you can want a simpler model, but, um, uh, but you're willing to go up to 5% loss in RMSE, you, you only need two splines. So if we go down, what happens if we go down to 1%? Three splines. And then let's look at that other option. Select by the one standard error. And we put, um, we put this, the result. We put the metric. And then we say the thing that we, um, that we tuned here. Seed splines. And it says three. So, you know, two or three looks like it is the best, um, the best option here. So let's, let's look, let's just put these on top of each other. Where did that, here it is. So let's put this here and let's add another one of these. So let's make this thick one, um, three. Let's make it, um, thicker and then let's add one of these bad ones like we knew we knew 10 was not good and let's make it um dashed so we can kind of see how this works okay so notice that the i don't know if they got thicker or not anyway um so the so three the the less curvy line is the one we think is a better idea and then the um, the more curvy line that goes back and forth more is one that we're like, eh, we don't need to be adding that many spline terms because it is too complex of a model 
probably. We don't get that much by adding that. We don't get we don't get very much of an improvement by adding so many terms. All right, so I think let's um let's use three. I think that sounds good. So what do we do now that we've decided to use three? Let's um let's do this. So we'll use a function called finalize workflow that takes the um the workflow that we had and then we will update it um, with um uh with with the thing that we want. So this in this case that is seed splines equals three. So if we update it, it looks like this, where um, it is um, no longer is it tunable. Now it is finalized. It has everything in it. And now we can fit that one more time. So fit um, to the all the training data. Before we were fitting on, you know, bits and pieces of the training data in our tuning, um, in our tuning, um, procedure but now it is fit one time on all the training data and we have our intercept and then here are our um, coefficients for our three spline terms here and now we can predict on that so if you um, you know if you wanted to um, save this object for future use you know you could save RDS with this object um, it's actually just um, uh, a linear model so you know well you've got this step in here so you probably would want to save this whole thing um, that would be the smartest thing to do here um, but we can predict on this so we can predict on the fit um, for example with the test data like so and so now we have um, for each of these <clears throat> uh, seeds because remember the only thing input here is seed this is a very simple just like curve fitting exercise effectively. Um, for each of these seeds, um, what is the predicted expected wins? And we can, um, let's, so let's take that turny test. So this is our test data. Remember that we haven't, we haven't dealt with it all yet. And let's bind this thing to it like so. And then we can see how well did we do metrics? How well did we do on our, um, on our, with this model, turning. So this is the original um, uh, variable, the outcome, and then this is the predicted one. And so we can see what our um, RMSE, R squared, and whatnot are. So let's see, it looks like, um, what was the last plot we saw? Let's see, so let's, where's the, let's look at the auto plot again. So it looks like with three, looks like we, you know, it makes it a little bit worse. It's a little bit worse on the testing than the training data, but um, not, not terrible. The other thing we can do is just predict um, from this, let me just copy that. We can predict on any kind of new data for example, just seeds, um, 1, 2, 16, which is the seeds, you know, that they have. And now we can see this. So th these are the same numbers that are in that 538 table um, in that center, that average, um, which remember, we don't have the data that they use to get those other columns that involved like the records from the... Um, um, from the from the games before the tournament, but this is um, this is that center that center column and 3.3 is actually exactly what they have for number one and these other numbers are quite close too. So this is I mean it's no shock right like we use splines to cur do curve fitting, but um, uh, this shows how we can go about doing that kind of thing. Notice we do get things that are dropping below zero. Um, which is, you know, not related to real life. Um, so, you know, you can use a different approach to do something like that or, you know, just just round or, you know, uh, put some kind of a floor on what you use when you go into real life. So I think this, what I really love about um, this example 
and I think is great to be able to take to any kind of real world work you do is the ability to understand um, that when you have a, a more complex model and you want to be able to um, choose a um, simpler model within some limit of performance that we have that option. All right, we did it. We use splines to understand how many um, expected wins each uh, rank or seed in the NCAA women's uh, basketball tournament are worth. And the result we got is very close to um, what the 538 modeling um, also has, which is, um, I mean, I guess not a great shock, but good to see. Uh, I think some of the most important things to uh, gain from the screencast are an understanding of how splines are a very flexible tool that can do great in a lot of different situations. And also um, how when you're tuning a, um, a hyperparameter, you can choose the best hyperparameter that gives you like the best numerical performance, but also you can choose a value that is good within some, but gives you a, you, you choose a simpler model that gives you performance within some limit. So I hope that's helpful and I'll see you next time.